Good morning and welcome back to Margin. This morning, we're going to talk about why your car can prevent being able to give. So let's jump right into it. So your vehicle is most likely at or close to the top of the list for your most expensive purchase. Now, if you own a home, it's probably not at the very top of the list, but nonetheless, cars continue to get more and more expensive, leading to greater and greater percentages of Americans' budgets uh, that are then attributed to this one line item. So if you already own a vehicle, it's important to look at what you own and know the book and market value of that vehicle. Now, this means knowing what the value is through a resource like kellybluebook.com or nada.com, as well as knowing what your vehicle would actually sell for in the marketplace. Now, you may see this as unnecessary unless you were planning to actually replace that vehicle. But reviewing this at least once a year will allow you to have a better active knowledge of what your vehicle is worth. Now, why this is important is for you to periodically see how well your vehicle uh, or vehicles are actually holding their value. So if you find that you're living paycheck to paycheck, downsizing a vehicle may uh, need to occur to give you some margin. But if this is the, the case, you will want to make sure that you first understand the market for your own vehicle uh, so that you are doing your best to not sell it at a loss. So if you are in the market to purchase a vehicle, on the other hand, consider looking at how that vehicle that you're considering depreciates after the first year, the third year, the fifth year accordingly using vehicle search engines like cargurus.com, cars.com, autotrader.com, or even Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. Now this will help you determine which vehicle to buy and how long you actually should keep it for. So one of the greatest pieces of advice I have when buying a car is to know what you're actually looking for, what type of vehicle you want, uh, the cost, the age, uh, whether or not extended warranties make sense, uh, as well as the specifications you want before stepping into the showroom. Now, this will allow you to make sure that you make a sound and logical decision uh, and not just let the emotion or the, uh, the smooth sales rep uh, get in the way of what you actually need. So many of the mistakes I see people make around vehicle purchases are letting their emotions get the best of them, not logically looking at whether the vehicle is a good fit for them and instead being sold on another vehicle that uh, that doesn't fit their needs and probably is more than they should be spending. So when trying to determine whether to buy a new car or not, consider how much you have put into your existing vehicle or, or will need to put into that vehicle based on upcoming maintenance. Now this will help you determine whether uh, replacing that vehicle is actually justified or not. Uh, what you don't want to do is continue driving a vehicle that is unreliable and consistently leaving you stranded or causing you to frequently have it in the shop. But on the other hand, you don't want to justify a large car purchase just out of fear of reliability issues or repair costs. So finding that healthy balance of buying a used vehicle that has already taken the initial depreciation hit, um, but will still be reliable for years to come, will ensure that you don't make a decision that you'll regret. Now, I know that markets ebb and flow for vehicles, and in some markets, it makes more sense to buy certain vehicles than other markets, but keep in mind what your actual needs are. Now, when it comes to selling your vehicle, making sure that you are making the most off of that used vehicle, you will want to explore the difference in value of selling the vehicle outright, taking it and trading it into a dealership or selling it to an online platform for a dealership to directly purchase it. Now, I would encourage you not to just get your car appraised and assume that that appraisal is the best offer that you'll actually receive and what the vehicle is actually worth. But do your research in looking at the book value as well as 
uh, what other similar vehicles are listed for. Now, beyond just the purchase or sale of your vehicle, think about those aspects of actually operating it. Uh, many people overlook how much it costs to own a vehicle or pay for transportation otherwise. Now, all of the aspects around your transportation should be evaluated, including those toll road passes, uh, parking passes, maintenance uh, plans for that vehicle, auto insurance policies, as well as the ongoing cost of fuel and, uh, and, and oil changes and everything else otherwise. Now, this will ensure that you are mindful of your transportation costs outside of the initial purchase, maybe that car payment or whatever the case may be, to make sure that these costs actually fit in your budget. Now I bring up transportation because it can be such a large expense that if gone unmonitored can eat away at your financial margin and really can limit your ability to be generous because of having too much money attributed to this one line item. Now my call to action today is to set a reminder to review your vehicle or transportation costs otherwise. This will ensure that you have the best loan if you have a loan in place, that you have competitive insurance rates uh, for your auto insurance, and that your vehicle is not consistently needing more in maintenance costs than it is actually worth. If this information is helpful to you, please do like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're reminded to come back on a daily basis and improve in managing your personal finances. Thank you for your time. Enjoy your day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.